All right, and we are back with the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, here to talk about everything in terms of the world of professional wrestling on the GSMC Sports Network. So make sure you guys tune in Monday through Friday. And yeah, we could talk about, you know, superstar news, talk about injury updates, contract negotiations, extensions, new signings for promotions like the WWE. To AEW, to New Japan Professional Wrestling, to CMLL. If it makes major news headlines in the world of professional wrestling, we talk about it here on this show. So, uh, yeah. All right. So, we just got done talking about bad blood. And, you know, it's only kind of fitting to talk about what happened after. You know, I had no idea this happened, man. I felt, you know, felt like a bad wrestling fan. But, like, it wasn't all over my social media. I've been really, I've been dodging social media all day because uh, I wanted it to be a surprise uh, because I didn't watch it until shoot till after Sunday night football. So I did not check TikTok, Instagram. I don't even have a TikTok to be honest. Um, I, I didn't check Instagram or um, Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. I was like, you know what? Like, you know, I, because I usually work on Saturday nights, you know what I mean? A lot of people do. And I'm like, oh, man, it sucks because I, I, you know, when you come home and something that kind of sucks about WWE's pay-per-views on Peacock is you can't start from the beginning. Like you can't, you know, yeah, you have to join live, then you have to rewind it. And it's just, I don't know, like maybe I'm just complaining too much. So like when you just press play, you know, and you just like, you know, you see what's happening at that moment. You know, but my luck, every single time I turn it on, somebody, you know, a shocking win or someone's holding the title up. And I'm like, oh, my God, of course, my luck, man. So now I just wait for it for the option to, uh, you know, from uh, from rewatch or start from the beginning or whatever. And I don't know. It's just uh, it's kind of sucks. It's kind of crazy. But, you know, I'm a wrestling fan. You know, we're all a little. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, but uh, I don't know. I just thought it was a. Uh, it was a good pay-per-view. It was a good pay-per-view. But this attack by Kevin Owens, what happened after was, um, was got to be honest, was a little troublesome. You know, I kind of, we kind of knew this was going to happen. You know, we kind of knew that uh, this heel turn was going to happen. Triple H says that they are dealing with the post-show attack on uh, Cody Rhodes internally, kind of adding a little muddy in the waters, blurring the lines between reality and fiction, of course, which WWE seems to be doing pretty well. I definitely love the outside spot. Kind of rain run reminded me once when the final boss was beating the crap out of Cody Rhodes as well. You know, there's just something about, you know, and it was, you know, totally seemed unstaged, totally seemed like they were actually fighting each other. You saw the fans becoming the first ones, people pulling out their phones, becoming the first ones to find out about this. You know what I mean? Not, like I said, I turned off bad blood. It was the end of it. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I, uh, you know, I was talking to my production meeting with my, uh, with my CEO. And, you know, he mentioned it and I was like, what? Dude, that's crazy. Like, like I said, we all knew it was going to happen. I definitely, definitely feel like this is, um, this is a good spot for Cody and uh, Kevin. You know, they get to work with each other, um, you know, moving forward for a couple of weeks. So I think that's pretty cool. They have great chemistry inside the ring. So, uh, you know, they put on good matches. Um, obviously heading toward a new, a new character development for Kevin Owens, more of an aggressive Kevin Owens, like you saw him. Before he was um, before he was gifted the WWE Universal Championship, where he came out, and he was fight Owens, fight win at all cost, do everything. You know it does. You know so what if you play dirty? You know some people have amazing uh, careers by playing dirty and winning dirty. Like look at you know the dirtiest player in the game, Ric Flair. Look at Triple H. You know all these you know amazing. You know look at what you know Hollywood Hulk Hogan did during his uh. Tenure as the w, WCW World Heavyweight Champion. And it just, uh, you know, it just makes sense. It just makes sense. And it's, you know, it was about it was about time. You know, they were flirting with it too damn much. You know, a lot of animosity. I'm not too sure how exactly Randy Orton fits inside of this. I think it's going to be pretty crazy to find out. Um, but is it, com- is it really necessary for Kevin Owens to turn completely heel? You know, where he starts like, you know, talking back to the fans and barking at the fans. Because even like when he wasn't like a, you know, total baby face um, or a heel, you know, he interacts with the fans and the fans interact with him. He does high fives here and there. But I think the fans just, they, they like Kevin Owens now. You know, they, they uh, Kevin Owens has definitely made a name for himself, especially after, um, you know, everything 
losing the, the Universal Championship to Goldberg, you know, kind of making it, you know, kind of turning heel, being a babyface, teaming up with Sami Zayn. Then, like, it's, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's the way that they're handling Kevin Owens' career is exactly what seems like fitting, you know, because not a lot of people look at Kevin Owens as that main event kind of guy, you know, but can he hold the United States Championship? Absolutely. But are there other people that could hold the championship lower than him or, you know, lower than him on the totem pole of, uh, you know, of wrestling stars on SmackDown that could hold it better? Like, a, you know, like a Carmelo Hayes, you know what I mean? Like a Carmelo I think that I think he would hold the United States Championship better than Kevin. Uh, Andrade, I think, would hold the championship, uh, United States Championship better than, better than uh, you know, better than Kevin. And Logan Paul coming back. You know, what's going to happen once when he comes back to WWE? Should be interesting. Should be crazy. But, um, you know, all in all, I thought it was, uh, you know, I don't think you have to turn him completely heel, you know, kind of goes out there, does his own thing, kind of like a Randy Orton character, you know, where he's not really like where you, you know, where you love to hate him and then uh, you hate to like him. Like, you know what I mean? But either way, the show goes on and, you know, you're either rooting for him and you're like, what a, wait, what am I doing? Why am I rooting for Kevin Owens? Because even during the attack, you know, some of the fans were, uh, you know, were kind of cheering Kevin Owens on. And a lot of people were like, oh, Cody, Cody, like, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a new day and age of wrestling that we have now. And I feel like it does have a lot to um, has a lot to do with social media. And you're looking at how WWE manipulates social media to kind of make things seem real. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's great. I think that's great. They're utilizing that tool for, you know, for better things instead of, uh, you know, propaganda and just BS and stuff like that. So I definitely like that. I definitely thought it was a good. Uh, it was a good spot. Like I said, um what's what does this mean for kevin owens contract does this guarantee him an, an extension you know um uh you know it, it's up at the end of the year i know they have some time to talk about it still you know, it is october i think a new deal is coming uh i don't think it's going to be as glorified as uh, what kevin might expect you know he, wwe did offer him something uh he turned it down um he saw you know he went uh his agent went to AEW to see if they can match it Obviously, you know, they were like, AEW's like, you know what? We have no interest in pursuing uh, Kevin Owens uh, as of right now. Uh, so, you know, it's going to have to probably take a pay cut coming back to WWE, which isn't bad. You know, will you take a pay cut to kind of be on the biggest wrestling standard in the world of professional wrestling? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, you're on WWE, you're on the It Show. You get a lot of media attention. Um, so at the same time, like, even if you were you know, trying to build up your brand to kind of be more of a hotter free agent stepping into the independent wrestling scene or TNA Ring of Honor or, uh, you know, or eventually taking a deal with AEW. You essentially, you want to stay on WWE because you get more TV time. Now that's, uh, you know, business 101, you know, like how are you going to get people to see you, if, uh, you know, and get bigger, better contracts if you're not going to be kind of like on the A-list shows and stuff like that. So, you know, kind of crazy. Like I said before, where is Randy Orton going to stand on this? Is he going to be opposed to what Kevin Owens did? I feel like he's kind of kind of come out and kind of have this, um, you know, like, hey, you know what? It's between them right now. You know what I mean? I forgave Cody, but, you know, Kevin obviously holds a lot more animosity because of the way the bloodline knocked him out, took him out of, um, or took him out with injury, same with Randy, but Randy or maybe is a surprisingly maybe a more forgiving guy, which is kind of shocking. But um, I don't know. Once again, I don't think they should turn Kevin Owens completely heel. I don't want to see him swearing at the fans or yelling at people or tearing up sides. Like, I don't want to see that. I think Kevin Owens is good as, a, you know, as that complete kind of like kind of like a Braun Breaker. You know what I mean? Like, you know, kind of like a complete badass. You know what I mean? You're not going to pander to the crowd. You're not going to see that baby face mentality and stuff like that. He's just going to go out there. He's going to say what he has to say. He's going to fight. He's going to keep fighting. Fight. Oh, and fight. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Ross, there's storytelling. Um, I think in WWE, the raw storytelling is, um, you know, it's getting better. Uh, I definitely liked how they, you know, it kind of blew up in the parking lot rather than, in, rather than inside the ring or after some BS match where he comes out with a chair, hits him in the back of the head or something. I kind of like the new innovative kind of style. Um, definitely love that a thousand and ten percent. Uh, Cody is definitely, he's set to face Gunther at Crown Jewel. I don't know how much this affects it. I don't think too much. But uh, because I, I know the fans would love to see Cody Rhodes take on Gunther. I, I know I will. I would a thousand ten percent. Maybe Gunther picks up the victory thanks to a Kevin Owens' um, 
you know, interruption in the match and stuff like that. Maybe him and Kevin, you know, go one on one at War Games for the WWE tag for the WWE Championship once again. But this time, Kevin Owens isn't going to, you know, not take an opportunity like Cody's knee was giving out. He could have took advantage of it. He didn't, but which ultimately cost him the chance. He could have been the WWE champion. Well, I don't know. He did hit two stunners and Cody kicked out of both. So, I, you know, I'm not too sure how that, you know, how that's going to go. But, um, you know, definitely love the angle that they're having here. Definitely like Kevin Owens kind of going toward the heel side. Once, once again, I'm going to say I hope WWE, WWE don't, they don't push him too heel. Like, you know, what I, mean? I'll, I hope they don't push him, uh, you know, too far off. All right. So it was absolutely crazy. Like I said, it was breaking news to me today, which I kind of love when WWE could do that. The unpredictability is sick. Definitely love the new innovative ideas presented by Triple H Paul Levesque. All right. So AJ Lee back in WWE. Is it a possibility? We're going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to ponder on the idea when uh, when we come back. So, hey, do not go anywhere. 